Today is one of my favorite days, it's demo day, and we started by taking out the drop ceiling. We're going to be drywalling this, so we've gotta get all the, the grates or the whatever, the grids out of there. Um, we're also gonna be taking out this vanity as well as the fiberglass shower fixture. The cabinet there has gotta come out, and also the toilet, so let's get started. Now the vanity was actually kind of wedged between the floor tile and the backsplash tile. So we started by removing the backsplash tile and then we were able to remove the vanity itself. Once we got the vanity out, then we could move on to the fiberglass insert. As far as that goes, we really just needed to peel back the drywall from the nailing flange that's under the drywall all the way around the fiberglass insert. We could remove all of those nails and then proceed to cut it up with a sawzall and break it out into smaller pieces. We also knew that the left wall that extended all the way to the ceiling, we wanted to cut that down about halfway to about 42 inches. That way we could make the shower feel a little bit more open. I was able to then finish off the half wall around the left side of the shower, um, making sure that that was nice and level and square. And then we also needed to start on the rough end of the plumbing and the electrical. Then it was on to the framing. We already had the drop ceiling removed, so I needed to start framing the new ceiling or where it would go. I got it up as high as we could. However, we used some two by sixes for the joist as well as some joist hangers, which brought it up to code to make sure that we could span that distance, but we needed to build a soffit around some pre-existing plumbing that we couldn't really move, unfortunately. Now for the steam shower, we actually needed two inches of pitch per foot, which we've got about a three foot wide steam shower, so that resulted in a six inch drop. What I did instead of dropping the ceiling there in the shower was I was able to go up into the actual ceiling and kind of create a little bit of a drop uh, or a rise in the ceiling and then a drop. Now that didn't account for all of the six inches that we needed to come down, so what I did was I built some blocking and made a little um, soffit ish thing around the top of the shower to kind of hide that drop in the shower ceiling itself. Once I got all that done, then I moved on to framing out the wall where the cabinet used to go. Now for the plumbing, the drain, uh, the existing drain location was in the center of that fiberglass insert. However, I knew we were gonna be adding a bench in the shower, so we needed to move that drain to center it with the floor pan. When it comes to electrical, I feel very confident as, as far as installing electrical and roughing that stuff in. However, when it comes to plumbing, as long as it's PEX, I feel confident as well. However, this was copper plumbing, so I actually asked one of my buddies to come over who is a plumber to sweat all of those joints for me. Now this rough end plumbing for the shower was actually fairly involved. We had three body sprayers, we've got a rain shower head, we've got a steam port as well as the steam generator that needed to go in, a diverter and two shutoffs. So there was a lot of copper that needed to be done and that's why I had my buddy come over and sweat all those joints for me. With all the plumbing and electrical roughed in, then we can move on to the actual drywall. Now drywall is one of those things that, well, I just hate to do it. So. Luckily, we have a guy that we use regularly for drywall and he does an excellent job. We had him come in 
and hang and mud all of the drywall and it turned out great. With the drywall up, the first thing I did was cut in and install the new lighting. We added three can lights to this bathroom and those were very easy. They're the ones that just, um, I had already ran the wiring in the ceiling and we just needed to drill those holes and connect them to those lights and those pucks just kind of snapped in there to the drywall. One last thing I needed to do was fill the giant hole in the floor of the shower pan. That was where the existing plumbing was and it wasn't it didn't matter, the hole didn't matter because the fiberglass insert. So once we moved the plumbing, we could pour some concrete in there to fill it. And then I brought the um, floor up using floor leveler up to the height of the existing tile, which we're gonna tile over. But before the tile went in, we needed to waterproof the shower. Now for this project, we used Curdy, which is a Schluter product. And that went on with Thinset. We were able to install that on the walls. It's just a waterproof barrier. And it goes on with a small amount of Thinset and you just kind of squeeze that out with a flat knife. And then we also installed a bench against that half wall kind of hidden by that little L shape. Now, I am no Schluter Pro by any means. However, the process went fairly straightforward. Like I said, you just use some thin set to get it on the walls. We got all that in place, overlapping two inches um, to make sure that we've got a nice waterproof um, joint. And then we added some of the uh, angled pieces that go and fill the corners and make sure those are waterproof as well. Once all the walls were done and the bench was in, then we can move on to the shower pan itself and that is a prefabricated shower pan from Schluter that we used and cut it to size. It fit in there great and we just, again, applied that with some thin set, installed the drain itself in the floor, and then we moved on to the shower curb. The shower curb is again a Schluter product. It is a foam uh, curb that gets cemented in place with Thinset as well, and then waterproofed with some additional Curdy band, as well as the shower pan itself waterproofed with Curdy band and their cor and their corners. With the shower all waterproof, then we moved on to the floor tile itself. Now the floor tile went in in about a day, and it turned out really really good. Um, it bonded to the existing tile very well and looks really, really good. It's a 12 by 24 inch tile from Home Depot and um, overall we're really happy with how it looks. Now I know a lot of people will say you can't tile over existing tile. Well, yes, you actually can. As long as there's no cracks and it's nice and stable and you know that it is a good base, you can definitely tile over existing tile. Once the floor was out of the way, then we could move on to the shower itself. Now at this point, it was around Christmas time and we were all really busy. So luckily we reached out to a friend of ours that does lay a bunch of tile and um, he was able to kind of fill in for me and keep this project rolling on those days where I was just swamped and other stuff. He got a lot of the mosaics done and then I was able to come back on the wall tile for the shower and um, that turned out great as well. For this shower, we opted for no shower niche, and the reason being is just because, well, I didn't want all the soap bottles and stuff to be visible from the outside, so I thought that maybe the bench would serve as a place to store some of those bottles and out of sight from 
you know, the outside of the shower. With the tile done, then we can move on to grouting the tile. And we chose to go with an epoxy grout for the tile, and this is gonna make sure that it is somewhat stain proof. Um, and it's, it's a little bit harder to work with. It sets up fast. However, it is gonna result in a better final product. Now, in order to waterproof this tile edging into the wall and kind of caulk that in, what we ended up using was DAPS Ultra Clear, which is a great product. It is super clear. It is waterproof and paintable. So going ahead and laying that Ultra Clear into the wall first and then coming back and painting over top of it will give us that nice, crisp, waterproof line. For the finished plumbing, we started by plumbing the vanity. So we had the vanity itself and we located exactly where the two sinks were. Now the vanity that was there before only had one set of supply lines and one drain. So we needed to Y off from that existing drain below the vanity and run that to each sink. With the vanity in place, then we can move on to installing the hardware in the top. Now, the top already had the sinks attached to it, so we simply had to seal it in place. And for that, we were able to use DAP's AMP, which is a new, um, it's a new sealant from DAP that actually outperforms silicone. It is, it's perfect for using around the kitchen and bath because it prevents mold and mildew. It's also 100% waterproof. So we used it to seal the top into the vanity as well as seal the top into the wall. And that's just gonna pre prevent any moisture from getting behind the top. The vanity and faucets are both from Kohler and the vanity itself is called Sear. And we love the color of the vanity itself. We also love the white quartz top and the rectangular sinks that gave it that more modern look. For the faucets, we went with a widespread faucet in satin nickel and it turned out really, really cool. Before I could install the toilet, I moved on to the trim and we just went with the existing trim to match the rest of the house, which turned out really good and went it easily. To seal that trim to the wall, we actually used DAP's Alex Ultra, which is a great product for paint projects like this. It's got a very good flexibility, so as the wall and the trim move, it's gonna be able to flex and not crack, and it's also paintable in 15 minutes. Now we can move on to the toilet, and as far as the toilet goes, we needed to raise the height of the, the existing flange since we added some height to the floor by going over the existing floor. So I installed a half inch spacer um, to the existing flange and mounting that with concrete anchors, but I wanted to make sure that it was nice and sealed, so I heavily, liberally coated the bottom of that flange as, as well as the existing flange with DAP's AMP sealant. Now the toilet itself and the bowl are actually two different pieces. The bowl we went with has a really cool feature where it has a spot where you can install a cleansing puck, um, which is going to make sure that your toilet is cleaned every time you flush it. And then for the seat, we went for a bidet, and this is a really, really nice feature. Um, we did need to install an electrical outlet beside the toilet in order for it to work but it came out really, really good.
With the vanity and the toilet out of the way, then I can move on to the shower final plumbing, which included installing body sprayers. And I hadn't done this before, so this was a little bit of a learning curve for me. However, they turned out really, really good. Beside the body sprayers, we've got all the controllers for the shower itself, which includes a temperature controller in between two shutoff valves. One shutoff valve goes to the overhead rain shower and the other one goes to the body sprayers. With all of that installed, I came back and sealed it in place with DAPS Ultra Clear again, which is a great product for this because it gives us that nice 100% waterproof seal. Now, since we've got a steam shower and just a bathroom in general, we needed to make sure that we could evacuate any moisture that might accumulate within the bathroom. So I installed a new bath fan in there. It is a Panasonic from Home Depot, and this thing is super quiet and it went in nicely. If you're a techie like me, you're gonna love this next part. We actually installed two lighted mirrors, one above each sink, and those are from Kohler, and those are super cool because, like I said, the lights are built into the mirror. So one of those mirrors is just a standard lighted mirror which is connected to a dimmer switch and can be turned on or off with the switch. However, the other one has an even cooler feature which is a built-in Alexa and speakers so that you can listen to music, get your forecast or even your daily news while you're in the steam shower or just getting ready for the day. After getting all that wrapped up, the last piece of the puzzle seemed like it took the longest, which was the shower glass. We ended up having to wait about five to six weeks for it to get installed since the first batch of glass that was shipped to the installer was damaged and they had to reject it. However, once it got installed, it turned out amazing. And with that in, we could move on to all the final details, which included the decor and just the finishing touches that went into this bathroom. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project as much as we did. This is one of the more killer projects that we've ever done. And it was a complete overhaul from the ground up, including the steam shower, as well as the bidet toilet, a sweet vanity from Kohler, and their built-in lighted mirror with speakers just really ties all of this spa-like feeling that we were trying to achieve together. If you want to learn more about this project and everything that we put into it, including all the product links, make sure you click on that link right there, and that's going to take you on over to the website. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that one right there, and don't forget to click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future projects. Until next time, be safe and happy building.